so hello everyone and this is a super super opportunity today for everyone to meet and to uh, get in touch with each other i'm very happy to have the opportunity to talk to you today about our experience with the european tourism going green project So I will talk firstly a little bit about our participants. You have heard about them before, but I will get in it into more detail. We'll talk about the workshops that we had and the topics we discussed. And we will also talk about the results and success stories, obviously. Let me start with the participants and give you a short overview. We have 11 hotels that participated in our project um, and they couldn't be more different spread through the entire country. They are totally different in terms of style, size, location and concept. We have family run hotels as well as a hotel that is part of a chain. We have hotels that promote travel for kids and a hotel that promotes travel for singles. We have a hotel that is traditional in style, classic in the city of Vienna. And we have a hotel that promotes alpine chic style surrounded by the mountains of Tyrol. A hotel that is a castle and under a preservation order, not always easy. <laughs> and um, hotels that have buildings that have been passed on from generation to generation, growing, adapting and changing each time. Also, um, always an exciting experience to visit. All the hotels um, in total have more than 500 team members, more than 700 hotel rooms, more than 1,600 hotel beds, 334,000 annual guest nights, and they have a total net revenue of more than 46 million euros a year. As I said, they're very different in style and very unique, and yet they're united in the goal to making tourism green. They have contributed and um, are willing to change their business practices and adapt all their operations to become a green hotel. All 11 hotels um, of the Austrian um, hotels have chosen the Austrian eco-label and the EU eco-label. You have seen them before. Now let me talk a bit out about the workshops we had. We heard from Dagmar that there were three national workshops between September last year and April this year. Um, at the beginning of each workshop, I asked the hotels, how much has sustainability been integrated into your hotel businesses? So we started with a self-evaluation. This was last year in September. You see a scale from zero to 10 and zero obviously meaning that sustainability is unknown to the hotel. 10 meaning that they are somewhat sustainability superstars. We started with an average of about, I would say a solid six. We moved on in December and we reached a solid seven. This April, the average reached a good eight. Two hotels even pointing out an 8.5. So this way we were able to visualize the change that has taken place in only a few months. If you're willing to set your mind on sustainability, you can really reach a lot. We also spoke about project progress. So in the second and third workshop, the um, hotels had the chance to update each other on their small and big successes that they've had from September to December, the list looked like this. It's nice, isn't it? <laughs> but in April, we already reached this. The reason we did that was that the hotels had the opportunity to share their experience, to inspire each other, to learn from each other, and to share information on topics that they all basically had to go through. Other subjects that we've di we discussed were meant to inspire on the one hand, but also to give practical ideas on daily operational things that you could do, that you could integrate into your hotel business. So we discussed the European Tourism Going Green 
program, its aims and goals. We looked at the different eco-labels to make it easier for the hotels to, to take their choice, to find the eco-label that was right for them. We saw that there were 21 to choose from, so it's quite a list. Um, we looked at good and best practice hotels from all over the world, and we took a couple of hotel tours, one with each, with each workshop, and here are some impressions. This was in Salzburg at Hotel Friesacher last September, where we were super excited to see a newly built technical room from which all the business uh, technical operations could be controlled and they were able to save an enormous amount of energy with this. We went to see Schloss Lerchenhof, met some new friends there, <laughs> and uh, heard all about the slow food region. And we had the chance to see Boutique Hotel Stadthalle this April, um, the first SDG hotel in the city worldwide. We talked about how to reduce water with simple measures such as water saving aerators. We had some practical hands on uh, examples in the workshop. We talked about how to set up a sustainability strategy and one of our hotels has eco, not ego, on its strategy. Um, we collected ideas on how to inform and uh, educate guests as well as um, team members, how to optimize waste management, how to integrate the sustainable development goals into everyday operations, and also technical solutions to save on energy. We spoke about green marketing, obviously greenwashing, unfortunately, and about green nudging as well. Now, let me tell you a bit about the detailed results of the 11 hotels and that they, have, that they achieved in the past couple of months altogether. I just picked a few. Um, the water reduction that they managed to achieve amounts to an estimated 10%. Um, the reduction of energy that results from this comes up, makes an estimated 500,000 kilowatt hours. I'm saying estimated because some of the changes have only recently been implemented and it will take a couple of months of operation to get real figures. Um, here in this picture you can see a rainwater tank that is being installed at Hotel La Viva um, and the water is supposed to provide, to, to provide the in-house laundry. The annual heat consumption of all 11 hotels from renewable sources makes up 50%, mostly through biomass, solar energy, and water heat pumps. We have 63% of chemicals that are being used, so cleaning liquids, for instance, that are certified with um, certifications such as the Austrian or the EU eco-label, Nordic Swan, and so on and so forth. They managed to increase the amount of waste sorted to 76% and there is further potential of a decrease of the residual waste of an estimated 10%. Here you can see the team of Park Hotel Matrai with their newly installed waste bins. And the annual electricity consumption from renewable sources makes up 100%. This is due to water power and photovoltaic systems. Here you can see the photovoltaic um, panels of Mühlfanviertel. They bought 18 electric vehicles in the past months for the use of guests and uh, staff members as, as well. They have held 70 and more workshops and tours. Again, for um, staff members and guests alike. Here you can see Alpenressort Schwarz and Mühlfanviertel at their workshops. This was again to educate and to promote sustainability. And they have installed photovoltaic systems of 495 kilowatt peak. Some of them are just being finished right now. <laughs> they will be completed by the end of the month. Again, here you can see um, Hotel Aviva's car park that be, is being covered in a huge, gigantic um, photovoltaic roof. 
Right, so um, the way, the path to sustainability has only just started and the hotels are aware that um, there is much more to be done. But they have started and that is the most important thing. They will continue, they will move along and as they move along they will improve. Now today, I would like to tell you more about them, but you know, time is very limited. <laughs> and um, that's why I would like to move on and tell you, today is all about celebrating your success stories. It is about increasing your network in ecotourism. So I would really like to encourage you to go and talk to the people of the other countries that have done projects that maybe could be cool projects for yourselves. Go talk to them, and to make this a bit easier, I will introduce them to you one more time, just very quickly. If you want to know more about covering your hotel car park in a huge photovoltaic roof, go talk to Christian Grünpart of Hotel Aviva. If you want to discuss the creation of a permaculture garden, you can talk to Erland Palle or his family um, from Hotel Prenzihof. If you want to know more about sustainable hotel buildings, get in touch with Daniela Kohutek of Kui Alpine Hotels. Wolfgang Kremslehner of Joh Hotel Johann Strauss will be able to tell you how to set up a highly motivated sustainability team. If you want to know more about using groundwater heat pumps, you can talk to Andreas Lederer of Lederer Boutique Hotel Capron. Johann Steinwender and his son will be able to tell you all about um, the slow food region of Carinthia, its history and their contribution to it. And um, Martin Krajovets and Kevin Reiter of Mühlfahnviertel will be able to share with you how to inspire your youngest guests in terms of sustainability. Thomas Winkler of Ferienhof Neusacher Moser and Florian Oboyas of Park Hotel Matrei can tell you how they managed to cover 100% of their heat and electricity consumption with renewable energy. If you want to know how to persuade your local wine grower to switch from single-use wine bottles to multi-use wine bottles, you can talk to Petra Lackner of Hotel Schloss Segau. They saved 20,000 liters of single-use glass. And Sophie Lena of Alpenresort Schwarz will be able to share with you how they managed to get the 17 SDGs into their team's DNA. So, guys, congratulations to what you have achieved. Seriously, keep up the good work. And you do know what the next goal is, right? And number 10 on the self-evaluation. <laughs> Thank you very much. And give a big applause to these ambitious <laughs> Thank you very much, Claudia, for this presentation. And